think you've lost by being born black in a white country? You no, know, I don't look at it that way. The greatest influence in jazz of all time, Louis Armstrong. Old empty bed. Jazz almost stems from Louis Armstrong. Wish I was dead. What did I do? Anybody who has uttered a sound on American it's radio, so black and blue. it's because of Louis Armstrong's innovations. He never would come out publicly, but at home he had his opinions. I've heard recordings of Pops just talking. He understood there was a battle in this country. I don't have no flag other than a black flag. That's right. There's a rumor that you invented scat singing. It came to me just like that. To be black in those days. The discrimination was unbelievable. We saw. His own inner dignity was able to make him prevail over all these awful conditions he worked with. What did I do? He was the first black movie performer to have his name above the title. I do. He was trying to use his music to reform and lead the country closer to his higher ideals. Arkansas had decided to make its own laws on the subject of integration. Louis said Ike and the government could go to hell. Everybody was astonished, but privately, he expressed stuff like that all his life. My only sin All over the world Is in my skin He had the respect They laugh at you And the love of millions And scorn you too What did I do? What more can any man ask for? To be so black and blue. Yeah. Hey, man, how you doing? Good. We met briefly at Woodstock. I don't know if you remember I introduced. Oh, yeah. Are you up there <laughs> now? No, no, no. Well, I, I live not too far from there, even though I, you know, I'm I'm from I'm from an area of New York City called Queens. I don't know if you've heard of it. I'm familiar. Where in Queens are you from? Uh well the, the mean streets of Forest Hills. Or 71st and Continental. Mean Street. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> As I said to John Legazamo, not to name drop necessarily, but he's from Queens. Yep. And he's from Jackson Heights, but we, I was joking with him uh, about how I had to walk, I had to walk a whole block to the school bus. So I know hard times. Don't tell me about hard times. Right. Well, he can tell you about cracks and heights. I'm sure. <laughs> that's right. That's where he's from. That's right. Um, have you worked with that guy? No, never met oh. him. Oh, okay. Cause they, yeah, I thought maybe, you know, being, being, you know, from, I don't know, like from the boroughs, we all kind of grew up, you know, especially, well, he's a little older, I guess. Now that I think about it. But you grew up in Queens, at least for some of your seminal years, correct? Yeah, I mean, most of my years, I grew up in Astoria. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so you're up, you're up near Woodstock? Well, I'm, I'm like across the river. Oh, okay, I got you. In, and I work in Red Hook, New York, and I live a little north of there. Right, yeah, we're in West Hurley part-time. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. I met your family very briefly. They all came with you to Woodstock. And to a very what looked like a pretty good crowd there that night. I was I was like, this is great, you know, <laughs> to get such good turnouts. Um, yeah, it was nice. How did the Q and A go? Uh, it was late for Woodstock. Eleven o'clock is pretty late. Um, I know, I know. Pretty, it was fine. It was people were engaged, had great questions, and good. really appreciated the film. So it was cool. I'm glad to hear that. Um, well, I loved it, and. I was going to ask you, I was, I was um, intrigued because I was, I remember you making some in the intro, you made a, a reference to kind of coming across Louis Armstrong, um, you know, maybe had some conflicting, even conflicting feelings about him in some way or complicated feelings at one point, And you have come around full circle 
and that's what led you to making the film or was during the process of the film? Can you talk a little bit just about your relationship with Armstrong? Well, the, the good people at Imagine Entertainment reached out to me with the opportunity and, you know, I, I didn't know much. I knew, I know, I knew what most people know about Armstrong, but I didn't really know that much, partially because when I was coming of age in the 80s, mm -hmm. and groups like Public Enemy were popular and Black consciousness was a thing. Right. I was searching for my identity. The guy that was sold to me by others, not by him, but by others, seemed like a guy who was a sellout, seemed like a guy who would do anything for white people in terms of entertainment and would shuck and jive for them. That was the Armstrong I, that I thought I knew and had, and had judged. But when I did the research after I got the offer to direct the film, I was completely blown away by who the guy really was and realized that he's the exact opposite of what I was told to believe about this guy. So um, it was a revelation. And for me as a storyteller, such a great opportunity because if I don't, if I don't know, there are lots of other people like me who don't know. And it feels like people are gonna be able to see this guy in a completely different light. People are gonna see him in the light. Like there are so many people who don't even know who he is, especially younger folks. So I think he's just, the, I can't name anyone in the modern era who is as cool as Louis Armstrong, who is as talented as Louis Armstrong, who is funny, can play his instrument, can sing, can write, a fine artist, can dress real swell, like, and has the temperament to battle white America or just America in general as an institution that wasn't really a big fan of people who look like him at a time when he did it. Like who, who, who does that? Louis Armstrong does that. Uh, it sounds like you're grateful then too. I'm listen, this is a game changer for me. I mean, I, okay. I've, I've made a film about Rick James and Wu-Tang and I thought they were pretty oh, sure. cool, but, but the response to this one has just been, um, it's been really amazing. So and maybe a byproduct will of of it being out in the in the uh, in the universe now. This film it's called Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong, actually, right? Yes. Because it people different people refer to him as Louis, some as Louis, um, but it's Louis Armstrong's Black and Blues, and uh, it will be out in the world. And those who maybe taught you or had an influence on your earlier ideas about Armstrong and who he was, maybe now you can influence their thinking about the same guy, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think I look at Basquiat and Basquiat mm -hmm. is revered the world over and super cool and I'm a huge fan, but I know Basquiat was a fan of Armstrong mm -hmm. big fan of jazz and Basquiat was cool. He's a nifty dresser, great, right? funny, witty guy, super creative. I think Armstrong, it's his time to have his Basquiat moment. He should have a Basquiat moment where people recognize his genius in multiple disciplines and recognize his gumption as a human being, as a Black man in America, when he was a Black man in America, achieving what he did, and also having a consciousness, you know, being painted as this guy who didn't have a consciousness and didn't care about Black people, was only interested in, you know, selling out to white people. It's just a, it's just a false, it's just false. So it's great to have the opportunity to do, to tell a story that at a time in our history where you have musicians that shall remain, remain nameless, who constantly have to remind you or tell you that they're geniuses, but to tell you how rich they are and try to tell you about politics in ways that absolutely make no sense and absolutely polarize everyone you can take a step back and look at Louis Armstrong and say, this is, this is who we come, this is where we come from. This is where it all comes from. Here's a man who didn't have to tell you he was a genius. Here's a man who didn't have to tell you he was rich. Here's a man who knew who he was when most people thought he didn't. Well, guess what he really did. I, I, uh, so he's, he's more relevant than ever, it sounds like. He should be more relevant than ever, yeah, for sure. Well, maybe I'll help that along a little bit, just a little bit more. In the past work, 
film work specifically about Armstrong, about Louis Armstrong. Has there, first of all, I mean, has there been a lot of of content out there for him? And what was your what was your experience when you were going through that? And uh, and then of course you turned up. Um, never. I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever seen a lot of this this footage. It looks like home movies are in here, and we hear from from him uh, the first, you know, directly from Armstrong. Um, he's telling his own story and reflecting about his own life here. Yeah, he made tapes at home. He had a reel to reel machine. Right. Where okay. He just, taped, he just taped conversations. He had a huge um, amount of <laughs> sitting there yeah. in this. And by the way, Queens, Woodside, right? No, Corona. Corona? Oh, okay. Sorry. Close enough. Close enough but, I don't um, know where I got Woodside from. I had a girlfriend, though, in Corona when I was going to high school. Nice. A little did I know. Yeah. Well, um, you know, he made these tapes and where he spoke his mind. And when you hear them, you have this perception of Armstrong. And then you hear the tapes, you're like, whoa, this guy's like a real guy. He's like a real day-to-day -day guy with day-to-day -day feelings and day-to-day -day thoughts. And it's amazing, an amazing dichotomy to know that this guy who actually is a genius as opposed to someone who has to say he's a genius. <laughs> and he's just having normal everyday conversations like a, like a mortal when he's not a mortal by any means. So that was super uh, just in, interesting, really super interesting. You feel like you're somewhere that you shouldn't be listening to what you shouldn't be listening to. Mm -hmm. um, not in a bad way though, in a way like a little kid eavesdropping on his on his parents late at night or something. How much? How much? Uh, uh, he had a whole wall, if my memory serves, like in his uh, house in Queens, of of these um, reel to reel uh, recordings, right? And how much were has been transferred? How much were you able to? Uh, how much were you able to listen to? Well, all of his audio recordings have been digitized, so okay. um, we were, we had the opportunity to listen to that. Uh, all of it. I, I think a good percentage of it, if not all of it, has been digitized. Uh, I'm so, sure. I'm sure it's fascinating. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I wasn't, certainly, I believe, I, you know, why wouldn't you? <laughs> it's just, it's, no, he's probably heard most of it before. Yeah, the Louis Armstrong House Museum in Queens, um, they've been the keepers of all of that stuff. And now they're building a museum, an actual physical museum that's not his house right across the street, which is pretty oh. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. But, but going to it his house is, is the treat. That's, a, that's what you want to do, for sure. It's just unbelievable. You're like, wow, I'm taking a dump in Louis Armstrong's bathroom right now. This is amazing. <laughs> you did do that. Come on. Yeah, you got to use the bathroom. There's a bathroom that people can use. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, there's a bathroom with, with gold fixtures and stuff that you can't, you can't use. It's been decommissioned, but there's a working bathroom okay. in the house that you can use. I see. It's really something. Uh, and you feel him. You feel him there, right? I mean, it's that kind of thing where you you feel his presence, I have to imagine. I mean, I tell the story of this turntable that we couldn't get to work. We couldn't even find the plug and somehow it started working. So, yeah, the guy's presence is strong and you definitely feel it in that house. Um, the name again, the film is called uh, Louis Armstrong's Black and Blues. And it's going to be on Apple TV Plus, correct? As of October twenty eighth. That's right. Is it also having some theatrical? Yes, runs? it's going to be released in, in select theaters around the country. That's amazing. But at the same time, it's on Apple Plus streaming. I maybe one of the publicists can chime in here because I what that sounded a little confusing to me. But you know, I want to make sure people. Now, here's when I was doing research on you. Um, uh, you know, wanted to know as much as I could get. Uh, this is, um, uh, I realized I saw your dad's film just recently because Oscilloscope released a remastered, 4, 4K remastered version of your father's, uh, Horace Jenkins yep. film, Cane River. Yep. How, how, that was only recently. That was, wasn't that uh, like about two years ago? Yeah. And what's interesting about that is that's all in New Orleans. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And when you think about it, Adam Yauk was, was a friend of mine, right? So it's like, wow, is Adam Yauk, my dad, and Armstrong in on the joke? I don't know, okay. but it's interesting. Was Adam Yoke from New Orleans? Adam Yauk was from Brooklyn, Beastie oh, Boys. Yeah, no, I know who he is. I just, I wasn't sure what the their connection was. Well, when I got the the interest from, you know, there are a few distributors who are interested in distributing Cane River, but when I heard Oscilloscope was- Oh, right, of course, he's the right, the founder of Oscilloscope, of course. I'm I, going straight, I'm going straight yeah. to Alex's company for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. That's very amazing. Well, I was just like, I hadn't made the connection until I started reading like, oh, that's interesting. So your dad was a filmmaker as well as being a, um, like a news, right? He was in the like TV journalism, right? Yeah, he was a documentary filmmaker and did some TV journalism. And then the last film he made before he died was Cane River, which was a narrative feature. Did he did you did he get to witness your early works? Any of your early works? No way. He 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 left in 83. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. No. But but again, it's I went to high school, Bryant High School in Queens. Um, you know, how I wound up doing this stuff, I don't know, but I think it was always in the back of my mind that I wanted to do it and wanted to be like my dad and somehow it worked out. Well, I think you'd be very, I'm pr pr blown away by this, this documentary. It's going to be, it's a, I, when I did get to um, write a synopsis for the Woodstock Film Festival after seeing it. So I forgot to mention that that was a treat. Oh, so I, nice. I was hoping, I was hoping to do the Q and a with you, but Willis uh, managed to, uh, to convince okay. me. He wanted to do it so much, so I, and and I, I figured I would get you on here as well, you know, um, and so, what was your what was your, I wrote down one note here, I guess, because I like just to kind of go with it, but what what you was your experiencing, um, viewing past existing uh like uh films about Armstrong, okay, and then you know what I mean, like with the given that it was in a different prism at the time, viewing the guy in a different prism, through a different prism. Yeah, I mean, you've got to look at it for the time period that it was released, you know? So there's useful information uh, mm -hmm. in the film, but um, people from different times have different takes on things that we see today. And, you know, like Leonard Bernstein is in the film and he's paying Armstrong, great compliments saying, you know, what we do is a, is like a bad copy of what you do and you're the greatest. And then he goes, and then he says, his music is this, that, and that, and it's simple. And I'm like, how could he say, after just saying that what they're doing is a bad carbon copy, how is it simple? And you think about it, he was super progressive guy, man of his time, and yeah. ahead of his time because he was super uh, progressive. But even in his progressiveness, he's capable of saying things that are just flat out, I don't know, racist, weird. Um, so, you know, these other projects from other times, there's nutritional value in them, mm. which, mm. but you also have to look at who made them and the time they were made and what they meant at that time. So this reflects my POV at the time of history we are in here in America today. Well, congratulations. And I'm going to really encourage everybody to see it. Um, Sasha Jenkins is the director. And um, uh, what's coming up real quick? Do you... you um... I'm, now I'm curious, this is such a kind of a turn, like, you know, a left turn, uh, although I understand it's fe it probably feels very organic for you in your evolution as a storyteller, but what what's next? I have a film about Ed Sullivan that's coming soon. Oh, right. I did see something about that. So you're, you're continuing to, see, <laughs> to try different things here. Yeah, well, Ed Ed is an interesting guy, and people are also going to be surprised by his story. That's what's Boy. so exciting about uh, his story as well. And and there's a great synergy between Armstrong and Sullivan. Like both films would be make for a great double feature um, because they were friends, and also there's a great synergy with the times and things they were going through. And um, 
I'm also finishing a film about Bismarck E, which is going to be done soon. Oh, great. Yeah. He's he's wonderful. Totally unsung, <laughs> interesting, super interesting, complex guy. Yeah. Mm. Deceptively so, maybe like Armstrong. Yes, for sure. Thanks. To, thank you, Sasha. I know you got a bunch of other things coming up. And uh, it's great to sit with you, even remote, virtually or remotely, what have you, and get to know you a little bit better. I didn't, I felt a little robbed at the Woodstock Film Festival. So uh, I hope we can do it again for that Sullivan know. project. And one, 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 one Queen's guy to another. Thank you. The, yeah. Thank you. Uh, talking about yet another guy who ended up in Queens. Is that where he lived the rest of his years? Yeah. He spent like, that's why they had the museum there. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, he loved it. He loved Queens. He loved his block. He was, you know. And it was my parents in Queens who introduced me to it. They were huge fans of Armstrong. So I grew up with that playing in the house in Queens. So oh, cool. it feels really good to, to come full circle on some way. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thanks, Adam.